yes, I'd say, or since the last podcast, um, it's transpired now that the rapper known as Six Nine, um, some refer to him as Takashi Six Nine, has now been moved to a different um facility, um, in his ongoing federal case. Um, I think I might mention it in the last podcast, but it did seem like because you know there were there were stories coming out when he got arrested. Um, that he was going to be placed into general population, right? So he's going to go into prison. He's going to go to jail, I guess, with, in gen pop, fixing you know all the random scumbags of the earth, right? Whilst he's away at his trial, which usually isn't the way things go when you're somebody of uh, notoriety of someone well known, right? If even if you're even if you're, I'd imagine even if you were a well known underground crime lord, right? They or that wasn't that wasn't um, known to, I don't know, that wasn't known to the everyday man on the street, right? I say just like you know someone that people knew on the streets but you, Pablo Escobar I'd imagine they'd want to not put you in gen pop either because you know ability in population you could stumble across or you could be put into you could put into you could be put in close vicinity with people who want to do you harm you know fellow gang members people you might have slighted in the past you know just the usual uh gems of that whole underground uh society right so it did seem quite weird that they were arresting six nine for racketeering charges, right? They threw they threw the absolute book of charges um at his um to, to himself and his co defendants from members of, you know, Trey um and Trey, right? Um some um members of his um former collective Treyway. So there was a lot of charges thrown at them, a lot of them to do with organized crime, a lot of it to do with organized crime specifically. They uh, putting them in general pop amongst people who were necessarily, you know, be looking for them to arrive and would want to enact their vengeance was didn't seem like a great idea. So it did, it seemed like to me at the time that the that the police were doing or the feds were doing that as a kind of ruse to kind of get him in general pop, scared the living daylights out of him, right? Because they didn't mention in the breakfast club interview that he was afraid of two things was it god and the fbi so get him get him to you know get a third on the list you know uh fellow goons who have nothing to lose right because he's been able to kind of exist in the outside world trolling everyone under the sun and kind of always skirting on that line between you know um putting his life in danger and also providing entertainment value for the legion of fans he has online but he's never had to kind of, it seems like he's never had to come across somebody who generally lives and dies by the sword, right? Lives and dies by that street code, lives and dies by that street lifestyle way. They don't see, their future is, their future is the streets. They don't see any way out of that arena because they've actually chose that life or the life has chosen them, whatever way it goes, right? But he hasn't really been put into, it seems like he hasn't been put into the, those kind of people, right? Who don't care that he's like a well-known rapper. They just want to like, you know, um, um, get an enemy out of the way, or they want to get some, or they want to just grab his plate of food and eat, right? So they want him just out of the equation. So maybe the the feds kind of thinking behind it was like, hey, let's put this kid who kind of thinks he's a gangster, hangs around with very um, certified, um, you know, criminal figures, get him in the general population prison amongst absolute lunatics, right? Um, and people who want to do him harm. Had them scared the living bejesus out of him, right? Him fearing for his life constantly. For, imagine, I'd imagine half an hour goes by very slowly in the prison, right? <laughs> I'd imagine so. I'd imagine they don't really have. I'd imagine the prison, the prisons probably don't have that many clocks on the walls, right? Like similar to like casinos. You know, casinos don't really have clocks on the walls, so you don't know what time it is. You can just gamble your life savings away, and you better off. And once you finish through that, you can gamble off your kids tuition fees away um i wonder if prisons have the same thing i guess you wouldn't really want to know the time would you if you're in prison you know that you were sitting on your bunk six hours you kind of want to 10 time dinner and maybe count down because when you do watch documentaries about prison you just hear people mention weeks that they've right they don't necessarily mention days if i'm thinking correctly i'm pretty sure they don't mention days they usually mention weeks but yeah so maybe the plan was to get him in there have the goons scare him in, in, in an effort that he would get so scared and he'd be so panicked that he'd want to snitch on his co-defendants because there's also another story going around doing the rounds, right? Because it, as I said, I mentioned in the other video, it, it just seems really weird that someone in 6 position, right? 
um, rise um, would kind of go, go from being an absolute nobody, right? He'd go through several um, kind of a style and music um, evolutions over the period of time, right? He kind of had that period where he would look like a fuckboy, you know, that famous picture where he's little cotch pants. Then there was a couple of videos where he was kind of like a, kind of did that emo sort of rap stuff, like kind of like similar to Bones, right? So he had like bleached white hair. He didn't have as many tests as he has now. And he was doing kind of loads of like, you know, again, loads of kind of like um, emo. I said emo. I say more so goth type music. And then obviously he evolved into his final form, which is the rainbow colored um, gun toting gangster, right? So th there is a theory going out there that supposedly he wasn't as involved as it seems, as the racketeering charges um, have it seem, right? Per, you know, sometimes when they write these these charges on paper, I was charged with ABH one, ABH one, right? Because I had a fight in the park, right? On paper, that makes me sound like an absolute nutcase, right? I sound like fucking um, Mike Tyson reincarnated, but I just got into a fisticuffs with somebody of football, right? And that was it, literally, that was it, right? So sometimes um, charges on paper can make you seem a bit more nuts than what you are and sometimes can make the charges seem a little more sexy than what they actually are. So there's a theory going out there that he wasn't as involved as, as it seems and he really was trying to, and he didn't know how, and he couldn't really kind of get himself, get his, um, himself out. And the moment he could get himself out when he realized that there was, Money was getting stolen. He wasn't getting as much money as he should have. As you mentioned, the Breakfast Club interview, he saw it was a good opportunity to kind of press the button and eject. But obviously, you know, savvy, savvy um, watchers or savvy um, listeners or people just around the culture would be remiss to mention that even if you weren't involved, hanging around with street guys, you can't just decide that you want to leave and quit. It just doesn't work like that. I would imagine so. Again, I have no experience of being streets in that capacity or knowing anyone who lives that lifestyle but i imagine you just can't decide to just quit oh i'm gonna stop now you guys are, got, are being too crazy especially when you're bringing in money especially when you um giving each these each gang member a platform to you know do their own thing right um shorty for instance kind of like it's quote unquote the uh, you know it's quote unquote like the, the label head of treyway he's kind of got Kind of gained notoriety off the back of the whole six nine rise. People would have anyone known who shot it was outside of the New York tri state area if not for six nine. Imagine if you're shot here and then six nine turns around and says, Oh, you're all fired. What's your natural inclination gonna be doing if you're a gangster? You're not gonna take that well, are you? You're not gonna be like, Oh, you know what? Good luck on your album release on Friday, yeah. Right? Hope everything goes well and I'll see you around the way. Like you're not gonna say that. You're gonna be like, What? What the fuck are you talking about? Get back here, man. You're gonna pull him by his hair and tell him to sit down to his pockets, isn't it? Um or you put bullets in him and all that malarkey. So it seems like the plan has worked pretty well for the feds. They put him in Gem Pop, they scared the bejesus out of him because you know, another story leaked recently that supposedly he was beaten up or some shit, right? Um, which I think is probably fake news. That got out way too quickly. Um, but again, you know, people inside might be selling info to get money and shit. He's a, he's got a big target in his head. Blah 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 blah. But overall, it's just an interesting. It's just an interesting case study for what not to do with a career. I think in both cases, even if Six Nine ends up getting off, getting off this, and he ends up snitching, um, on his co-defendants, which is another interesting part of it as well. Going, but. I go in a case study. I wonder, right? Um, we're living in an era, right, where you know, previously, if 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 a if a hip hop act, a hip hop rapper, a hip hop rapper specifically, act, hip hop artist, hip hop, a rapper in 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 hip hop, let's say, for, let's be specific, a rapper in hip hop was uh, found out, was revealed that he did, he or she didn't write their raps or didn't write as many raps as they thought we did, right? Or if they made it, or if they gave the impression that they everything that they put out, and then it came to light that they didn't. In years gone by, that'd be you out, right? That'd be you cancelled, you're finished, right? And it's not like a social justice warrior thing. It's just you know, the art um, of hip hop or the um, beginnings, the kind of origin story of hip hop is the whole idea behind somebody sitting down and writing a rap, right? Putting words together trying to make them rhyme and then trying to say those words 
off the top of your head on a beat and trying to stay on beat and trying to make a melody, you know, hook, chorus, da 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 da. There's all these things that constructed it, but the main basis of it was um, rhyming words, right? Writing down words that rhyme together. So when you find that someone doesn't do that writing process and just performs it, it kind of skews the whole like, hey, you can't be the best rapper, right? You can't be the best hip hop, right? Because you one of the fundamental elements, like you know, like breakdowns and like like graffiti, you don't do. But as the Meek Mill and Drake situation proved, people don't care as much as um, hip hop purists would want them to care, right? Hip hop is now kind of, and partly it's due because of the you know the consumers, and partly it's mostly to do with the fact that hip hop isn't a need. Um, genre anymore you know back in the day when it was just krs1 and all those kind of dudes right a bit of a niche genre where you know you were kind of flexing your rap rapping capabilities that that kind of um criteria of judging who the greats were made sense and nowadays hip-hop being what the number one genre which it wasn't before right it's quite hard to judge people in that same criteria when they're having to appeal to a, what, a far far broader audience that hip-hop had to appeal to back in the day right it just wasn't the same thing back in the hip-hop didn't have to appeal to such a broad audience it live in its own ecosystem right there were moments when it kind of crossed over right around the mc beastie boys uh snoop dogg for, for a certain extent being good examples of this but for the most part it kind of was able to exist in its own little niche but i really wonder nowadays right with that being a thing right you don't you can't get cancelled if you don't write your own raps I wonder if this might be an also a good case study for a rapper who goes to prison, snitches, everyone knows, and then comes out and continues their career and nothing happened. Because we kind of saw the similar sort of thing happen with Richard Kidd. Even though it's kind of slowed down for him, I don't really see him out as much as, much as I did before, but maybe that might be due to legal troubles, might be due to himself just taking the fall of the pedal. But Richard Kidd and Lil Uzi Vert, when they had that little scuffle at Starbucks, right, where chasing him around the counter and everyone saw that rich kid was wasn't on fighting right he didn't want to fight Uzi Vert. he was he was he was scared at that moment right maybe he was scared for his life because he Uzi Vert had friends with him but Uzi kind of gave the from the from the video he gave the impression that he wanted to fight it right i don't know what problems he had but he had problems he wanted to fight him he didn't want to fight him it didn't really do nothing right usually in the past if you would have saw i don't know if you just saw Name a rapper, right? Jim Jones running away from somebody, right? Running away behind the counter. He was scared to fight somebody. That would really, really damage Jim Jones' career. Like, he probably wouldn't be able to recover, right? It's really damaging. You see Jay-Z running away from some guy, right? You'd rather see Jay-Z try and fight, lose badly, than seeing him run. You won't, no one wants to see that. So I think, I wonder if this 6 9 thing might be a good case study to see just how far hip-hop has evolved that he would come out snitch because if you know if 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 fucking Zayn Malik end up snitching on one of his former bandmates in One Direction, no one would give a fuck, right? No, no one would bat an eyelid, right? People would give him a documentary. He'd be there in a bow tie talking about how he was his life was in danger, right? No one would give a fucking ball like what happened. Imagine, imagine what happened with Six Nine. You know? But again, I guess for him, I guess for his own ego, for his own pride, because you know. You watch back some of the interviews with Six Nine. He takes a lot of pride in the fact that he doesn't listen to advice, right? He doesn't listen to. It. He doesn't go by. Doesn't listen to. He doesn't go by what um the general consensus is. He doesn't agree with general consensus because effectively, his skirt in the general. He's kind of middle finger approach to the general consensus. He's kind of unrelenting pursuit to troll the whole world. Has got him where he's got to, right? So you can't necessarily tell him anything, right? Um, in the same vein as Trump, because obviously I've read the Trump book, um, uh, Fire and Fury by Michael Wolf. You kind of get the impression that Trump, um, um, loves he kind of bask in his ignorance. He enjoys the fact that he doesn't know certain things. For him, it's like a, it's a bit of a not. I wouldn't say a sport, but he enjoys kind of pressing intellectual buttons because he knows that, you know, he. He knows that he doesn't know what they know, but he's got the job, right? So 6 9 is sort of in the same sort of position, right? Okay, you guys don't tell me I should chill, I should take it easy, I should kind of grow up, I should leave the streets behind, but streets are kind of, kind of what got me here, right? If I just keep ramping this shit up, it might keep going and going and going. And when it stops, it stops. Because I said before in the other podcast, like, I think the kids nowadays, they don't really give a shit. 
I think they are in the same, you know, like that's why some people would argue, you know, there's reports that came out about American football being really bad for you. There was a few reports about football too, about people heading the ball and it's bad, you get bad brain damage, you get CTE, blah, blah, blah. But a lot of former athletes will tell you that kids don't give a fuck how much evidence comes out telling you that football, American football, rugby, all this stuff is really bad for you, right? Um, in the long run, because they're only showing that they're only seeing the short term, and they think the uh, juice is worth the squeeze. They'd much rather have a five-year career, right, playing uh, in a Premier League, earning thirty grand a year, and setting up their family for for life, or allowing themselves to buy their parents a house, or to get a new car, or I don't know, just live that lifestyle. They'd much rather have that, and then get the brain and deal with the brain damage after, than not have it. It's just one. It's as simple as that. So these kids just want the likes. They want the clout. They want the attention. It's a, we live in an attention economy, right? This that's essentially where the whole influencer thing comes from, right? It comes from the fact that brands uh, are unable to garner our attention in the same way they did before, right? With billboards, with magazine adverts. Uh, radio ads, whatever it may be. Those conventional marketing uh, techniques didn't work. Um, don't work the same way they did in the past, right? They don't have the same engagement. But if you really want to talk to people, you have to talk to them through the people they champion, people that they look up to. You have to kind of slap your logo on the back of that person and hope because you look up to the Takashi 69, you see a logo of, I don't know, Popeyes on his chest and you want to buy Popeyes chicken, right? That's what they're kind of banking on. So the brands know that it, how valuable uh, an influence and the kids who want to be influencers know how valuable it is to be an influencer. This is worth the squeeze. So if it means selling yourself out, if it means potentially going to prison, if it means being looked upon as like a social pariah, like a bunk that goes around and steals fucking uh, donuts from Dunkin' Donuts and shit, it doesn't matter. As long as you can get on, the kids don't care. So I wonder if that don't care about how you get on attitude um is existing and it's permeating the culture and everyone's seeing all these influencers getting free stuff and everyone wants to be an influencer everyone wants to be a tastemaker everyone wants to be known and have a name reputation i wonder if that's lingering in the air and then six nine who kind of perpetuate this image of a gangster people didn't think he was a gangster but you know the racketeering charges proves that he even though he might not have been you know on the street selling rocks and shit he was in and around those people so you know he lived that life per se if he comes out and snitches, will anyone really care? I think not. I personally don't think so. I think there'll be some hubbub about it online and stuff, but I think for the most part, it won't really stop his trajectory. I don't think so. In the ways that it would have maybe in the past, I just don't think it would have stopped it. No way. It might, you know, you might invalidate your comments in some regards, but I don't think it's going to stop you completely. It's the same way with Drake with the whole... Uh, meat mill situation and Quinton Miller people don't care but you can't necessarily say you can't necessarily have Drake in a conversation as the best rapper alive because we know he doesn't write some of his raps right so it's that's fine and I guess if you're fine with that that's cool but that's the most that's going to happen no one's going to stop Drake from not putting from putting out an album doing a show uh, are you crazy like he just completely wrapped up what 55 shows recently now for the Drake um Drake and Amigos tour thing that they did, right? 55 fucking shows with that amazing stage design. Insane. So, yeah, I don't know. Let's see what happens. Um, look, uh, So, he's been moved to another facility, 6 9 I think I've spoken about him a bit too long now already. But it's just an interesting case, isn't it, overall? Um, let's see where it goes from now on. Um, hopefully, a resolution is made very soon. And I guess, yeah, it's just, uh, you know. He's obviously brought this upon himself. It's not like a woe is me story, but it's just, you know, it's just sad to see somebody that was going one way and all of a sudden they go, and, yep, you know what I mean? Like, Meow. it goes crashing down. That's that's the sad part of it. Not the fact that what he done and, you know, that's sad. Oh, he lives in a ghetto and, you know, it's because of the economy and oh. he's a grown, he's not grown up, but, you know, he he made sure he made some choices. He He kept making the wrong choices that were given the right results. So, you know, you can't really blame him sticking with it, even though it was kind of a bit foolhardy. But, you know, let's see what happens as the case develops, because I'm sure some interesting things will pop out of the wood. Let's see.